10 minutes after 7 o'clock right here on Morning Barbados. What you just heard is some of the work of our next guest. You actually saw his face before I did, <laughs> indeed. Kyle Corbin is a British Barbadian composer, orchestrator and arranger. He joins us now on Morning Barbados as another one of our exceptionally young people in the world. Good morning to you, Kyle. Good morning. How, How are, are you doing? doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. Oh, wonderful. You're British Barbadian. Yes. When you recognize what that means, what does it mean to you? Well, um, I was the first of my family to be born outside of Barbados. So I very much class myself as British. And funnily enough, every time I come back to Barbados, there's always someone to recognize me as British by my very English voice. <laughs> But I've spent a lot of my, my life in Barbados. This is actually, I'm currently in Barbados and this is the seventh time I'm visiting. So ah. I definitely have a home here, for sure. So what does it mean for you coming to Barbados? Um, for me, the most valuable part of coming back really is just, you know, reconnecting with family and friends that I haven't seen for a long time. Like it's been, I think, three and a half years since the last time I was here. So it's really, <laughs> really great to just reconnect with family and friends yes. that most often don't know that I'm here, as is Pernod Barbados. He just <laughs> so bump, you give them, bump into people on the street. <laughs> you give them a surprise. They say, hey, come yeah. you're here. This is yeah, great. that's exactly how it is. <laughs> Are you one of those who, when you return to Barbados, you have to go to the beach? Yes, every time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love I, the scene. I, which is your favorite beach? Um, I think the last one we visited was Rockley, and I think the sunsets there are my personal favorite, uh, mm. like without a doubt. Like the pictures, I love taking pictures of sunsets personally, <laughs> and the, the pictures I get there are second to none. They're gorgeous. Well, fantastic. Back in the UK, though, when when yes. people look at your last name, your surname, and they see Corbyn, mm -hmm. do they ask questions? Well, I think most often they spell it incorrectly. Like yes, they, B Y N. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. Constantly, and even after I correct them, they still manage to spell it wrong. So I, I, I do have to do them on several occasions, but yes, it it, it comes and it goes. <laughs> but the conversation must be okay. So if it's spelled B I N, where are you mm -hmm. from? And they ask yes. you that question, and then you say, "Well, I'm from Barbados." So <laughs> I think I introduce myself as that quite a lot. So yes, wow. I, I like the fact I wear that you. It on, on my heart. There you go. I love that because you're born in the UK, but you are a Barbadian <laughs> yes. at heart, and that makes all of us Barbadians Absolutely. very, very proud indeed. But from a very young age, you discovered that you had a particular, very special gift. What was it? Yes. So when I was young, I started playing the piano. I started playing mm. at six years old, and since then, I've just leapt into my musical potential. Really. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, to be able to do what you did at that very young age, just playing by ear. Me, I try yes. to read the notes. I try to understand <laughs> what it is. But here it was. You were able to to hear it and reproduce it yeah. immediately. And, and I'm sure your parents looked at you and thought, who's this little one in our house doing this? <laughs> how, how, what was their reaction when they found you being able to do what you can do so well? I mean, I, I owe my musical success really to them because they just mm. pushed me forwards and upwards. Like at that age, there's not really much. Obviously, you have dreams of music and stuff, but there wasn't really too far-fetched and there I was just enjoying what I was doing on the piano and yes. I guess they saw the potential in me so yeah here I am. <laughs> and, and here you are because at age 13 you did something phenomenal <laughs> you re were able then to release your first full EP so talk to me a little bit about that yes. and, and what it meant for you even at 13 years old to be able to yes. achieve what you've been able to, able to achieve. So I was always you know constantly like pressing buttons, seeing how mm. things worked on a keyboard, pressing buttons, seeing how things worked. And I, at a young age, I guess I realized that I could be one of those artists that I'm constantly listening to that makes their own music. So I guess I just started experimenting and mm -hmm. I, I started experimenting for a very, very long time. And I kind of realized that all this music that I'm making is just sitting there Yes. on a cloud on the internet somewhere and it's not really going anywhere to the public so I was like I should probably show this to people <laughs> and so I ended up releasing an album at 13 years old 
Wow. And having done that, when you did release it at 13 years old, what was the response and what did it mean to you to be able to do so? I mean, it was quite tough, actually, as a 13 year old, um, because you, you, you make music as that young teenager who is going through school, as I'm sure you can imagine. And, you know, you try and showcase your talents to your, your, your schoolmates. And it's, it's tough sometimes because yes. people don't really want to well, listen to someone who they barely know. Yes. So um, it, was, it was tough convincing people that I could, you know, have a future in this art form. But I guess that for me, mm -hmm. looking back, it definitely taught me how much I value my own art, my own talent and my own music because it showed how much I wanted that future. And so I carried yes. on making music. And I mean, now in the year 2022, I have seven and a half thousand listeners on Spotify. Wow. So that speaks for itself. <laughs> wow. Is there any other composer, arranger who, who you are inspired by? And if so, who? I think the two that inspire me the most are called Lorne Balfe and Michael Giacchino. And mm -hmm. I think they're most well known for the Mission Impossible movie that most recently came out and the Pixar movie The Incredibles, who I know is very popular. Mm -hmm. The two composers who wrote the music for those two movies have been a massive inspiration for me over the years. Wow. And, and so in this inspiration, have you found yourself patterning until you found your own footing? Or did you say, you know what, I like what you do. I will tinkle in the genre, but not necessarily your style. It's a bit of both, actually. Mm -hmm. Like um, you hear certain things that inspire you and you're like, wow, I really wonder how they've done that. I want to recreate that in my own style. But then at the yes. same time, because I'm only 19, so I have the, the youthful exuberance and the time to experiment like i said before i have the time to experiment and basically do what i want musically speaking so yeah <laughs> are, are you hearing what i'm hearing the piece of music are you hearing it too yes i am tell me yes. about that because it, it sounds very cinematic so tell me about it yes <laughs> so the piece is called injustice and i wrote it um midway through 2020 I actually wrote it a couple of months after the death of George Floyd. Um, mm. And as I'm sure you can remember, there was a lot of yes. outcry and outrage when that first came out in the, in the media. And it was interesting for me as a young black man living in England because, well, it's, it was kind of confusing because that is a very, it sounds really cynical, but it's a mm -hmm. harsh reality that I live in. It, it's very normal to, to hear that a black man has been killed by the police in America. And so the fact that all of this outcry, I mean, don't get me wrong, I was happy that it was being spoken about, but mm -hmm. it was a very usual thing. And I was like, how do I process this while still explaining this daily living to people who might not understand it? And so the way that I found my way to do that was through writing that piece, which is mm. called Injustice. And it, it's called Injustice because of the well, the daily injustices that we as black people can live through sometimes that isn't always spoken about. I'm always curious as to how you do that. How do you compose a piece like that? Is it at, from an emotional space and then suddenly the notes flow? Or is it a, a, something you heard in your head and you thought, let me just document it by notes on a piece of paper? How, how does it work? Because I well, experience again. it, but I don't know what you do to start that experience for me. Of course. I mean, for me, it actually can be a bit of both. And it mm -hmm. kind of depends on what the piece is. Like, I have, I've written a lot of music, as you can possibly, probably yes. imagine. And um, not all of it comes from that, like, incredibly deep emotional point, like the, um, the George Floyd piece did. But in a piece like that, yes, it will come from that emotional, like, background. And I will think, this is how I feel and how this is the story that I'm approaching it with. How do I tell the story that is in my heart mm. through this piece of music? And then I will just flow, basically. <laughs> but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it is it's just having an idea in my head and just getting it down as quickly as possible and just going with it. So to have created that piece, for instance, how long would it have taken? You said you just flow. And if you're just flowing, it just comes to an end within five minutes? Or is it some, a piece no. of a, a work that takes you hours, for instance? I mean, to put it into perspective, like I, as, as I said, I've come back to Barbados for Christmas this year. 
And um, as you can imagine, oh man, the music in this country just doesn't stop. I love it. It puts you in the Christmas mood so quickly. <laughs> and so a lot of time when I've been here at home, just relaxed and having n not much to do, I've mm -hmm. just sat down and started writing. And I've started writing some like orchestral versions of Christmas songs just mm. with my spare time. And I think since I've been here, I think I've written four because I can wow. finish them in about three to four hours, like fully orchestrated pieces. Yeah. It's just something I can do. And it stems talent that you mentioned earlier of being able mm -hmm. to play by ear because mm -hmm. when I first started writing music, I had to sit at a piano and like hear what I was playing. But because I've now been writing for about four years, like orchestrate, like orchestral yes. compositions, I can now just hear instrumentally, I can hear the notes in my head. And so I, right. I just basically write. And so the Christmas compositions I've written have taken me no more than three or four hours, really, because yes, yes. it's just fun. I love it. It's what I do. Clearly you do, because that's outstanding. That's truly outstanding. It's beyond <laughs> me. How you can hear the, 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 the bass notes, how you can hear whether this is for treble, all of those yes. things, you hear all at once. And you yes. create the color <laughs> that, that makes music enjoyable for all of us. Now, at the moment, yeah. you're studying at Hudders Huddersfield as well, the university there at Huddersfield. Mm -hmm. Now, I know the Huddersfield Choral Society, the group, yes. the choir. The choir is outstanding. Yeah. Are you a part yeah. of that, by the way? Are you a part of that? I, I wish. Last, when I joined last year, uh, well, singing is actually one of the few musical things that I don't like. have the muscle to flex. Um, <laughs> my, my dad actually is a very, very good singer. So from mm -hmm. a young age, I, I had that, that, um, that influence. But uh, when I when I um, when I went to uni for the first time, my my sight reading wasn't incredible. So mm. like 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 I know how to read music, but I'm yes. not very fast. There are people who out there who can just read music like that, like they're yes. reading a book. It's insane. I'm not <laughs> one of those people. So I wanted to get better at it, and singing is one of the best ways to do that. So I yes, joined indeed. the choir for a year, and they are incredible, man. Oh my goodness, yes. man, the sound that they produce is yes. next to none. It is gorgeous. I know. <laughs> I know for a fact the Huddersfield Choral Society indeed. So they are there now, now studying. You're doing, you're pursuing uh -huh. your music for film and screen. Yes. So yes. how different is that from what you do when you're just having fun? How different is that course yeah. of study from that? It's very different. Like writing music for writing music's sake is very different than writing music for a scene that is in front of you. I think, and it kind of actually falls back on that, that conversation we were having a couple of minutes ago with the emotional versus the free, yes. where with, with a free composition, you just, well, like I said, you just flow, you write, you write whatever comes into your head. Mm -hmm. But with one of those emotional pieces or with one of those scenes, you have to depend on the story that you're telling. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to writing music for a scene, you have to, the challenge for me personally is writing a, a, a score that is for the people that are going to see it yes. and not just writing music that I like. Yes. <laughs> like if I was writing a piece of music for a scene that, well, for a movie and all of the music was just music that I liked, I'm not sure many people would enjoy the movie because <laughs> you know, I would for sure. But, <laughs> you know, you have, to, you have to write music with the audience that's going to watch the movie in mind. So it's yes. very, very different, the approach to writing music. Mm -hmm. So would it require you then to read the script and watch the scene before you, you, you score it? Or you just look at it and you get it immediately? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very much like the first one. Like, mm. one thing I've learned this year, there's a reason that uh, there comes one of the first credits you see in movies because um, it's known in the film world that they're almost the last writer mm -hmm. because they have the ability to completely change like them. That's actually one of the biggest reasons I got into writing music for film is because... Mm. Watching movies as a kid, the reason the composer I mentioned earlier, Michael Giacchino, he's known by people as the Disney composer because he's yes. written the majority of Pixar movies. Mm -hmm. And when I was watching those movies as a kid, I was like, this music really had, like, if this music was different, this scene would be so, like, different. Like, yes, I would yes. be reacting to this suddenly, but because the way it is, because it's so happy, because it's so sad, because it's so dark and evil and scary, I am now scared or I'm so happy or I'm so mm -hmm. sad. And that captivated me as a child. I was like, this is so cool that somebody is sat there <laughs> writing this. 
yeah. and having the ability to completely change my outlook on this movie. And I wanted to be that guy. So well done. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, and, and the wonderful thing is that the world has evolved to the point now where people like yourself who are scoring for film and screen, you're being recognized, your true your work is being acknowledged and now you are becoming just as important as the star, the one who, yes. still, who, who acted. And what does that mean for your future now? Have you looked at your future? Have you painted what that will look like? It's made me very, very happy seeing the progression of, well, not just music, but just mm -hmm. arts in general over the last couple of years, especially, especially during the pandemic. I think the pandemic was a weird one for creatives because it gave because everybody was indoors, they spent more time on social media. And so they just, well, they watched us, basically, whether it was artists, whether it was painters, whether it was musicians. We were all just doing things because we were locked in our houses with our crafts. Yes. And so it gave us the ability to just, well, do it. Have mm -hmm. fun. And so I think the world has now almost turned on to the, well, the art behind the stuff that they watch and so yes. i'm really looking forward to well no it's not personal recognition but like the recognition that musicians get because yes. it is it is i'm going to be honest it can be quite low but i am happy that it is on the rise yes yes and i ask that specifically because you know there, there are lots of people like yourself some who are probably younger than you too who are passionate <laughs> about music and then you, you meet yes. some parents who have a different plan, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and because yes. of that parental <laughs> plan, you find yourself rafting through life. But here it is, you yes. found your footing, you're just 19 mm -hmm. years old and you have the full yes. support of your parents. And so you're mm -hmm. able to achieve the kinds of things that you've been able to achieve. Where can people yeah. get access to the music that you've already released? Yes, so I am um, on Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, pretty much any um digital music streaming platform if you're mm. on it i will be there under the name kyle Corbin, <laughs> as you've seen <laughs> if you're on if you're on it you will be there i love yes. you meet the people where they are they meet you too where you are as well yes and so exactly. how long so how long will you be in barbados for uh we're here till the 30th to, we're flying back for old years night Oh, but, um, you're going to miss yeah, the last <laughs> part of the year, man. You're going to miss it. <laughs> what are you looking forward to most on Christmas morning? Well, uh, this is actually my first Christmas in Barbados. Uh -huh. So though I've spent a lot of time of my life here, I've never been here for Christmas. And so even in England, we have a very Beijing Christmas. So the oh. food is plentiful. We don't stop eating. We're eating in January. <laughs> but like... Honestly, I am so looking forward to the food here. Like, man, I know for a fact I'll be well fed in Barbados. Like, the food here, just, it just tastes better. It just does. Yes. Like, it's yes. more flavorful. <laughs> so what's your favorite Beijing food? Uh, I love, and it's not necessarily a Beijing food, but when I'm, look when I'm looking forward to Christmas, it's the ham I'm looking most forward to. It's my favorite thing on the plate. Oh, wow. I love it. <laughs> it's a luxury you. for me. <laughs> I am telling you, it's going to be fantastic. You will have a jolly time while you're here. And if you can, I'm not so sure. I think they may have Christmas in the park, you know, Queen's Park in town. Ooh. And if you saw the Barbados Police Service Band, other performers yes. and other groups will be there as well. Take some time mm -hmm. early Christmas morning once you finish church. Hint, yes, hint. Ab <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and you go over to the park and enjoy some really great Bajan music indeed. And who knows, maybe you can be orchestrating mm. some other pieces for us here on the island as well. Listen, yes. Kyle Corbin, you are such an inspiration indeed. Thank you for spending the time with me. Enjoy your holiday. As a Barbadian, we are super proud of you for what you've been able to do thus far and for what we know you will be doing. We'll be watching all the credits on uh, upcoming screen films to look to see your name because we know that you'll be a part of it all. This big blockbuster is coming out soon. Kyle, all the best indeed. Enjoy your holiday. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. You're welcome. Likewise to you indeed. Kyle Corbin, who is a, an exceptional Barbian, and what an exceptional young man as well. We're coming back after this.